Good evening, class. Good evening. It's a pleasure and a privilege to stand before you once today. Um, one of the things I want to say is um, this is my first Bible class here um, in the Atlanta Bible College. I don't take it kindly um, for uh, to say that uh, all the smiling places here have been there. Um, you guys have made it. Each and every one of you have been pleasant. Um, you have made um, my uh, journey here. Although it's just begun, you have made it soothing because uh, you have a loving spirit. Um, each and every one here. So, again, I won't be before you long. I'll be about, uh, I'm going to stay around somewhere around 30 minutes. But anyway, but anyway um, again, I pray that you all have a pleasant and blessed week. I pray for your travel and mercy, for your sanity, for your health and strength on a day to day basis. Find your head for a moment of prayer. And tell my most gracious Father, we come to you both the only way we know how. Giving you complete honor, thanks, and glory. Father, thank you for this day that never be seen again. Father, we ask that you just continue to just move in our lives, touch us, guide us, be with us in each and every way. Forgive us for all our sins and trespasses. Father God, we ask for that you continue to allow us to be a blessing to others. And as we be a blessing to others, you will draw all of our heart, thanks, and glory. And as I deliver this message, Father, I ask that will both decrease and you increase and your word be fulfilled. I pray all these things and many other blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of you are familiar with the game Simon Say? Fairly old game. Uh, I picked it up when I was early in my childhood. For those who don't know, Simon Says is a game with three or more players, which one player takes the role of Simon. And he is the instructor. Um, using physical actions such as jump in the air, stick your tongue out to the other players, but you should only be followed if the instructor is saying, Simon says. The players are eliminated from the game by either following the instructions that follow, following the instructions that are not perceived by the phrase Simon says. It is the ability to distinguish between valid and invalid commands, rather than physical ability, that usually matters in the game, or in most cases. The actions just need to be attempted. You just need to try. The command starts with Simon says mean a player must obey the command. The command without, again, uh, stating uh, Simon says, you're not supposed to, supposed to move off of that action. This could be a very complex and difficult command or a game. I know for me, when I was a child, I was one of the first ones to always get out because I was just so eager to participate. So, my journey in the Simon Says game didn't last long. Again, the Simon Says game goes like, Simon Says, raise your hand. You'll raise your hand. Simon says, put your hand down. You put your hand down. If the instructor was to say, stick your tongue out. And if you stuck your tongue out, he was eliminated from the game. Okay, now, this is the interaction piece. I want to go ahead and play Simon Says with you guys. Okay? Alright. Well, now, what we're going to do is, we're going to start by putting your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. All of you to put your hands in the air. Already that. Gosh, all, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because you didn't follow the instructions. Oh, yeah. And that was Simon <laughs> said. Okay. Simple, but again, practical. <laughs> I believe that there's a reason why God gives us one mouth, two eyes, and two ears. Mm. I'm a firm believer that it's very important for us to hear that it is a speak. Although speech is important, what would you think would happen, or how would you think it would be if we all had two mouths? Uh oh. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the chaos and the mess the uh, world would be in? We wouldn't understand each other. 
We wouldn't know how to comprehend. We wouldn't know what was going on. Okay. Think about it. Everybody in this room, if you're physically able, has two eyes, two ears. Is it complicated to have two eyes? Is it complicated to have two ears? Now, as a matter of fact, in my instance, I got a set of glasses on. So I'm operating off of four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, no matter the fact, is it is better to hear than it is to speak. Hmm. A blind person could actually play this game, as Simon said. For instance, cover your eyes. Or just imagine you're in a dark place, tone down. Just, just close your eyes. By my voice, are you allowed to play the Simon Says game? Okay, open your eyes. Now, cover your ears. Or just imagine you are in a solitude area, in a tomb, and you can't hear a thing. Are you able to play the game by not hearing? Good. Unlike the game of Simon Says, the good thing about when we don't listen to what God has for us or when we mess up, we are not counted out the game. It is His grace that allows us to give or to get a second chance. Now let me explain a little about God's grace and I'll be brief. Most of you are familiar with paying bills. Typically, I'm going to pick a date, your cell phone bill, rent, whatever. It's normally due on the 1st. What happens on the 5th? The 5th or the 15th? There's a penalty. That's God's grace and his mercy. It's that in-between moment that God gives us before we get penalized. The goodness of God's love for us is so great. That's why it's so important for us to follow Christ and not the ways of the world. Turn with me if you would to Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 29. Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 29. We're going to speak from the subject follow the leader. Follow the leader. Now I'll go ahead and read. I think we all have different versions of the Bible, but I'm going to come out of the King James Version. Now in Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 23, it says, And he said unto them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me. In the A clause it says and he said to them all, not some, not this half, not that half, but he's speaking to all of us. Deny ourselves. Take up our cross and follow him. Not on tomorrow, daily. It is important that we follow God's instructions. In verse 24, it goes on to say, For whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Verse 25, it says, For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? That's the problem with society today. They're not following God's instructions. They're not denying themselves. They're seeking after their own self-pleasures, their own self-desires, and trying to make it in this world. But then they but, but then they wonder why they're suffering and they're lacking. It's because their spiritual life has been put in the bottle. That's why it's so important for us to, like some. Like the game Simon says, follow the leader. It's an instruction. God's word is nothing but pure instructions for us to live by. It is a guideline. That's why it's so important for us to follow Christ. What Jesus was saying here was he was saying, trust, believe, lean not to your own understanding. And when you follow me, you're imitating me. We are all Christ's beings. 
We're to love and respect each other. Not to be crabs, not trying to pull each other down. We're to love and to support each other. He said, imitate me. Turn with me if you would to 1 Corinthians. The fourth chapter. <clears throat> verses 16. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16. I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to be like Mike. I ain't trying to be like I. But if I want to imitate somebody, it is to imitate Christ. That's right. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 16, it says, Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Here it is again. Follow me. I'm saying, this is the life you have if you follow me. This is what you gain if you follow me. Be a follower of me. Don't seek self-pleasures. Don't seek your self-desire. Because when you do that, you are destroying yourself. We need to stand on the word of God and believe it. Don't waver from it. Turn to 1 Corinthians, a couple of chapters over to verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. We need to be firm believers of Christ. Stand on his word. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, it says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Jesus was saying, Hey, here I come. My Father has sent me to give you instructions. I'm an example. I'm your visual piece. Follow me. I know the way. Follow, trust and believe me. Follow me. One of the things that we have or we suffer with is follow. Even as adults, we're not eliminated or excused from following. We want to do our way. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want to seek self-pleasures. We don't understand. We, we want to develop a path. But then we wonder why we're so stagnant in our faith walk. The Bible clearly speaks about faith. This is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Christ came, he said, listen, follow me. You may not know the way, but follow me. I got a news for you guys. Jacob, Bethany, David. We must be, we must pursue righteousness. Mm. We have to pursue that thing. And as a matter of fact, it's a matter of life and death that we do not pursue the things of the world. But we are to pursue the righteousness of who? Christ our Father. We got to get it. We got to go ask it. The word pursue means go after. Mm -hmm. Come. Go, go after. Get it. Seek it. Follow it. It's yours. The question is, I ask most people, what are you going after? I minister to a lot of the youth. I ask, what are you going after? You're going after the cars. You're going after the bling bling. You're going after uh, you at the club trying to make it rain. You're trying to do all these things. But what are you going after? And and the, and and society teaches the kids or the youth of today that this is what they're to go after. Mm -hmm. Question is another question: Who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? Some people see contain. Oh, they search hard. There's Match.com. <laughs> the funniest thing is that they have a Farmers.com, <laughs> <laughs> and there's and there's a commercial. And they have to get the cows, and the cows are saying, where's Betty at? Oh, she's out there in the middle. Well, where's Tom at? Oh, he's out there cutting. Oh, they're so lonely. <laughs> but society and the media, the television teaches us this is what we taught to seek. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting the desires that meet your mate, but don't make that your sole purpose. Mm. A real question, who are you following? Follow the leader. Who is that leader? That leader is Christ. He'll never leave you astray. He'll never leave you wandering. It ain't going to be 
be easy. But he said, if you believe in me, I'll guide you. I'll direct you. Rest in me. Come. Follow the leader. Turn with me to 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, verse 11. First Timothy, the 6th chapter, <coughs> verse 11. We're almost, we're almost home. Almost home. Almost home. Oh, that won't be before you long. Let me give you a little take. <laughs> now in verse 11, it says, But thou, O man of God, Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Oh, my goodness. That's in my sermon. That's in the Bible. But that's the same thing that Steve talked about. That's right. That's the same thing Bethany talked about. But read it for you again. It says, oh, but thou, O oh man of God, flee these things. What are you fleeing? Your self-desires, your self-pleasures, the selves of the world, the self of the, un- 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 the, un- the unrighteous. Follow me, he's saying. Faith. What are you having faith in? Amen. When you lose your job, you panic. It's typical. We, we flesh, but we panic. We immediately jump on uh, 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 careerbuilder.com and all the other people. Oh, we got to find another job. Oh, you're tapping into the credit and you're trying to see what we get. Stop. It's okay, Lord. Simple. For most. Not for me. It's easier said than done. Because when that happens to me, two weeks ago, <laughs> I, I was sitting up here scratching my head. Like, well, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to make it. But I didn't consult my lawyer, my no. attorney. I was speaking with Bethany and some other people. I, 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 I said, well, well, this might be a good opportunity for me to go full time with my God. Find the goodness and the grace and everything, every obstacle. Romans 8 and 20 says all things work together for the, for the good of those. Even those thorns, those bruises, those bumps, those hurts, those pains. Oh, it's all going to be good because I serve a God who can't do nothing. He he, he does everything but fail. That's right. Everything but fail. Mm -hmm. But we got to flee these things. Self-desires, pleasures, lust of the world, materialistic things. Those things are terrible. Those things are bad. You got to take care of that with you. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 22. <clears throat> I don't know for a while I seeked a lot of things. So I after a lot of things. Made some money, wanted more money. <laughs> Bought a nice car, wanted a nicer car with a bigger engine. <laughs> and they didn't even know where. We're broke. I just understand I'm there you know where we're from. That's one of the reasons why I I won't be where 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 there's many reasons why I won't be one to hit the power ball because I'm not gonna stand in the line and throw away my money and check my tickets, but 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 that power ball number looks so great. <laughs> but he knows you get voting three hundred and sixty million he he go, he might Oh, he ain't ready for that. He gonna, he gonna, he gonna forget about you. And, and, and he's gonna destroy himself. The things we seek after. The things we seek after. Destroys us. That was 2 Timothy. Chapter 2 and 22. It says, flee. Also useful lust. Uh oh. <laughs> that's that word. That, that's that big word. Lust. Well, follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, 
with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. How many times today have we touched on love, faith, charity, peace? That's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> That's something that that hit home. There you go. That's confirmation for me. I need, I need to go back home. And go, okay, now let me find out. Be spiritual first. Okay, Lord. Now what does this thou mean? And then I deal with it. But, but, it, but it says, get rid of the lust. The right to faith. Seek it, faith. Charity, peace. We all want peace. But as long as your mind and your heart is not right, you ain't gonna get it. I spent many nights mad. When I was just mad. <laughs> when, when I'm like, I told you this is my last time. <laughs> I had it too. I, I did. I think I did this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, listen, listen. I didn't know what you told me to do. Uh-huh. I was a good employee. You, you know what my plan, my plan was. But he said, mm. "See, that's it. That's your plan. I have a plan that's greater than far more than what you can imagine." I need you to get right. I need you to focus. Here it talks about having a pure heart. We all can say, yeah, okay, I, I, I got a pure heart. Well, Christ knows our heart. Yeah. And we got to examine that. I know you're asking, how do we do this? How do we purify your heart? Turn with me to 1 Peter 1, 22. And we could do a breeze. <laughs> First Peter 1 Four. 22 Four. How do we purify our heart? And it says See ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit and unframed love for our brothers see that we love one another with a pure heart He's saying, listen, to come after me, to be Christ-like, you got to have a heart transplant. Mm. We all, at some period of time as Christians, have had that heart transplant. We may not went under the knife like most, but when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, that was a heart. We've had surgery. We got when he busted all this up (laughs) and reconstructed it. But he did it with his love and kindness. He did it with a touch. So if you confess your sin, if you open up, if you bust and believe, boom, there's your heart transplant. If you love, boom, there's your heart transplant. Serve all the God, boom, but me, that's a heart transplant. Now I'm going to leave you with three small points. That I want to touch on, and I'm going to take my seat. I want you to meditate on these three throughout the week. Consider these small homework assignments from another student, <laughs> along with the other things that the Lord and Satan has given you throughout the week. And these are the three S's. See, say, See. Boom. You hit it. See, say, see. What do you see? What are you focused on? What are you keen on? It's simple for us to walk throughout the day with our natural act. We're reading the word of God and having God lead us. We're leading through our, we're looking through our Spiritualize. Read and discover what God's word says about each and every one of you. Despite your current situation, media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, read and stand on the word of God. Mm-hmm. His word is final. This Bible here. 
It's a blueprint for our lives. I encourage you to read it, digest it, get it in your system. The second one is say. What are you saying? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your situation? There is power in the things you say. The heart transplant. Speak from the heart. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Don't take my word for it. Read it yourself. As a matter of fact, go to uh, give me two more scriptures. <laughs> go to Proverbs 18 to 21. It, it, it specifically talks about the tongue. It's a weapon. Mm. It's powerful. That little thing, that little thing, does so much damage. Proverbs 18:21. It says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." And they that love it shall eat the fruit. Therefore, and the fruit again. You can have three sermons. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still touched on the fruit. There you go. That's right. But life and death is in the power of your tongue. Speak life. Not only to yourself or those that are in you, your current situation. This thing is not selfish. Speak life over your friends. Speak life over me. Right. Speak life over your grades. Speak life over your job, your family. Speak life. Practice it. Follow the leader. He says, speak life. The word of God is not just for you. Don't be selfish with it. Share it. Mm. Us as Christians, God brought us out of the darkness into the light. That's right. Why? So we can share and be with his others. He did it for me. He's no perspective for me. He did it for me. He did it for you. Like I said, those three things. See it. Second one was say. The third one was see. Then the last one is see. I want to touch on that. This is your last scripture. You say we've been through the Bible today. Turn with me to Matthew 6 and 33. I get excited here. There you go. <laughs> Matthew. Matthew 6 and 33. One of the all scriptures Bible, but this one. It's a spirit when I get to when I get ready to touch on that one. Matthew 6 and 33 it said, but ye see, but ye, but seek ye first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. My goodness. I sought after all types of things. I done made some money. I done bought a home. I done took trips. I done done all that thing and I don't have none of it. There was a time in my life when God called me into ministry. He said, Come, this is what I want you to do. And if you don't do it, I'm going to sit you down. Mm -hmm. 39, 40 years later, I'm out of a job. I'm in school. Now I'm scratching my head like, uh, this is what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what was needed to get my attention. Now, I'm seeking the kingdom. There you go. I'm seeking what he has for me. I'm tired of speaking death over my situation. Mm -hmm. My family, my friends. The world is dark and gloomy enough. If you got into a fight with somebody else, with Nathan, I know y'all Christians, y'all don't fight. <laughs> but, but, if, but if you got into a fight with Nathan, would you put yourself in the mouth? <laughs> exactly. Speak life <laughs> over your situations. <laughs> Seek ye first to him the kingdom of heaven, and everything will be added. Not some, everything. You go. That scripture right there is so powerful. I don't know about you, but I need her. Mm -hmm. Every minute, 
Every second, every hour. There you go. I don't need no drink. That's right. I don't need no smoke. <laughs> I don't need the well, I'm honestly, I'm depending on the word of God to sustain me. To take me from one place to another place. When I accepted the Lord as my Savior, I didn't know what it was going to take or what I was going to go through. And I'm a firm believer being a follower of Christ. I'm on Christ's I'm, I'm on his foundation. I'm on, I'm on, it's like a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. When you're on a roller coaster, you're strapped all in, you're on the track, you're going, you're going up here. Well, okay, alright. This is, this is good. You start riding. That's, that's life. And that's what your spiritual journey is going to be. You're going to go up here. You're going to get to the top of the hill. You're going to know, oh, okay, I'm ready to spin, ready to go. But when you go down that hill, you start screaming. <laughs> you're going to go toss left. You're going to toss right. You're going to go upside down. You're going to go backwards. You're going to go in the tunnel. You're going to get some water shot on you. That's life. But you're on the foundation. Right. It's just like that roller coaster. It's on a track. That track is the foundation of the world of Christ. Be encouraged, stay on the track, pray, and as Paul Fogan says, beat your vitamins, <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> stay in the race. Follow Christ. You say move? Well, I don't understand, but uh, okay, I'm going to move. Faith. It's an action word. Faith. He's saying jump. Come on, I got, I got you. Stay connected to Christ. Respect others. Love your neighbors. And continue to praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen.